Yes, amen. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Great to be in God's house, amen. amen. Come on, give him some praise this morning. He's worthy of our praise, amen. If we came for any other reason, we came for the wrong reason, amen. It is great to be in the house of the Lord today. You can be seated if you'd like this morning. We're excited to be in the house of the Lord. And I want to just for just a second, if you'll make our online family feel welcome this morning. If you're a first-time guest online, would you just make an effort to put first time in the comments somewhere? We appreciate you being here. We're excited today. We heard it's Pastor Appreciation Day. And what I have found, right, what I have found uh, and you know well if you've been here a good while, but I found out a long time ago uh, a shepherd can't shep if he don't have sheep. And so the only way you can have Pastor Appreciation Day is if you have a great congregation. Amen. And so we bless you guys this morning. Uh, we're excited to be in the house of the Lord. And that song right there should have kicked somebody right in the pants. Two of you got kicked in the pants. All right, we're going to have to sing it again, aren't we? But that song should have got you fired up this morning. We're just as excited to be in the house of the Lord as we are to have our dear friend Hans Hess with us today. Uh, I have a bio about this long for, for Brother Hans. And uh, as I was telling him I had this bio, he said, no, 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 no. You know what his mission is? He, is? he has two beautiful daughters. He has one awesome grandson, and he said, I want to win as many people to the Lord while I'm still on planet Earth as I can. Amen. And so I will give you a brief introduction. Hans is a senior pastor of Fountain of Life, uh, and that is in Elizabeth City, North Carolina. And so if you need a place to, I'm just kidding, uh, Elizabeth City, North Carolina. Uh, prior to this, he traveled extensively as an evangelist, also planted a church in Sterling, Virginia. Hans is a vital part of the Evangelism USA through the IPHC, and we're, uh, we're blessed to be a part of that little group as well. Uh, he's the lead pastor of Fountain of Life. His vision is to see souls saved, evangelize the community, disciple new believers, and participate in revival. I want to tell you this part is the best for me, right? I love to see a, the smartest guy in the room. I've been in the room with this guy a lot of times, and if he's not the smartest guy, I still say he is, right? Because he's just a great person, and you'll find out in a second, just a great spirit. Uh, he's also active in the scholarly community, holding a BA in ancient history from University of Kentucky. He has a Master's of Divinity in Practical Theology from Regent University and is a Ph.D. candidate for Historical Theology. And see all of that, right? How beautiful. Give him a hand one more time. I want to share with you. Come on, Brother Hans. I want to share with you that he has a, his first book or his book, First pa uh, Passive, Passage explores the foundation of Christianity and the transition as a new believer. It'd be great for you to check that out. He is also a gifted musician. I asked him if he brought his guitar. He said he always has a guitar, but we may not have time for that today. He released a debut album in 2013 called Set Free. And if you don't mind, again, make him feel welcome today. I love you, brother. God bless you, friend. Thank you.
Because what the enemy intended for evil, God has turned around for his good in so many amazing ways. But then I started traveling this summer, and I've preached something like five different camp meetings or pastors' conferences. And I started talking to pastors uh, throughout the summer, and I realized they were discouraged. A lot of these men and women had been through trials and lost people, and their churches were half the number they used to be, and some of them had survived COVID or buried people with COVID and on and on and on. It was just the discouragement was tremendous. And so I just started preaching joy and started preaching encouragement and started telling people, you can make it and you can move forward. You know, no generation that I know of, maybe except the Spanish flu in the early 1900s, has experienced what you and I have experienced in our last two years. And if we made it through this, it's building something in us that's going to carry us, I think, to a great place in the Lord. So if you're here this morning, I just want to encourage you, keep moving forward. You've made it thus far. You're going to make it. God's on your side. God's for Life Changers Church. And I bless this pastoral couple that they're going to continue doing great exploits and great things for the kingdom. Can somebody shout amen? Amen. What is happening in this text is that the Israelites have come back from Babylonian captivity. And if you know the story of the Old Testament, Israel went into captivity because of their sin and disobedience against God. 
and that God had prophesied through Jeremiah and others that they would come back after 70 years of captivity, and they finally did make it back. And these guys are writing this probably sometime in the years after the return from the captivity, and they're looking back, thinking about it. And they're saying, when the Lord brought us out of captivity, we were like those who were in a dream. And I think to keep moving forward, it's always good to look back and rejoice over what He did and what He's brought us through. I don't know about you, I, that's healthy. To look back and think, God, you brought me out of some stuff. The power of recollection. I don't know about you, but I remember when I got saved. I got saved, I was not serving the Lord at all. I had was not brought up in church. Uh, I'd been to church, I think, two times in my entire life by the age of 16. And I was a high school student in Grundy, Virginia. I got very sick. I was put in the old Grundy Hospital for, I was placed in there for about a week because I was so sick. And during that time in the hospital, you know, I was playing in rock and roll bands and, and experimenting with drugs and alcohol and running with the wrong crowd and all that. And when I was in the hospital, one night a voice spoke to me. It wasn't an audible voice. It was just a voice in the interior of my heart. And that voice said, you don't have to party anymore. And when I, that may sound crazy to you, but when I heard those words... It was like I was in a dark room and someone walked over and flipped the light switch on. And like an, an awakening came to me. Then I, I was released from the hospital and I went back to my mom and dad's house and I was walking down the, the hallway one day and that same voice spoke to me and said, the world is coming to an end and you better get in church. So I picked up the phone and called a girlfriend I had at the time and I said, hey, your mom and dad go to church, right? She said, yes. I said, do you think they'd take me to church? She said, Hans, they would love to take you to church. And they took me to this Pentecostal church. And I was like somebody who had landed from Mars. It like scared the life out of me, man. People raising their hands, people kneeling down to pray, getting loud. I was like, what? And I fell right in, gave my heart to the Lord. I think back about that time. I've told that story thousands of times, I guess, but it never gets old. Come on, your testimony never gets old. It never wears out. You need to think back some of those days when you don't feel saved, some of those days when you don't feel the presence of God at all. You need to think back to those times when God did pull you out and did visit you in a powerful way. I think of the time I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, the first time I felt the presence of the Holy Spirit in my life. I think back to some of the great revival services we used to have back in the mountains or some that my wife and I participated in over 28 years of seeing God move and change lives and show up in His glory. If I get a little dry, I can just think back. But it's not good to stay in the past. It's good to visit the past, but you can't live in the past. And so what they say is, they said, we were like those who dream. And the other nations were saying, look at these guys. God has done great things for them. And then they say, Lord, and in the New King James it reads kind of awkwardly, says, verse 4, bring back our captivity. And they're not saying, God, take us back in the bondage. But what they're saying is, do for us again what you did for us while we were in captivity in setting us free. That's why the NIV says, restore our fortunes. Bring deliverance again. Do it one more time. I don't know about you, but that's my prayer this morning. Do it now in 2021, God. Do it one more time. Let us see your power. Let us see your glory. Turn our nation around. Set our churches on fire. Save our young kids. Send revival to the schools and the universities. God, don't leave us. Don't forsake us. But turn us around again with your power and your anointing and your glory. Come on, can somebody shout amen? How many would raise your hand and say you agree with me this morning? Let Life Changers Church be a nexus. Let it be ground zero for a revival in this area. Hallelujah. Let it be that. 
Let it be that, Lord. You know what it takes to have God to visit you again? It's just a willingness to have God visit you again. Years ago, I, I, I've preached many revivals and we've hosted many revivals in our church and we've seen our, our you know, we, my wife and I pastored three churches through our career and we've seen them grow and, and God bless. But I remember one time an evangelist friend of mine named Doug Eccles came and visited me. This is back in the 90s. And um, he preached one morning and we had a great meeting and we, we went, I think, four days, typical revival. And at the and it was good. It was not like amazing, maybe, but it was good. And at the end of the revival, Doug and I talked, and we said, "You want to keep going? How about we do it another week?" And we did it another week. It got better. At the end of that week, we said, "You want to keep going? People still getting saved. Let's keep going. Let's do it another week." We ended up going nine weeks, back to back, and it got to a certain point. Last couple of weeks, we said we got to get out of this building. We went out and 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 set a tent on a major highway in Chesapeake, Virginia, and we saw. And I had a small church at the time, but we saw sixty-four people get saved. We saw a lady healed of cancer. We saw a lady's hip grow out. She had built-up shoes. Doctor had to give her a normal pair of shoes because she was miraculously healed. On and on and on, we saw those things happen. And, it, and I'm not saying it happened because we showed up one Sunday morning was like, oh my gosh, God has arrived and now we are in revival. It took us sitting down and making a decision, God, we're going to pursue this thing and we're going to see people won and we're going to see this happen. Do it again in our time, Lord. Come on, can somebody shout hallelujah? Come on, do it again. Do it in Withville, Lord, in the name of the Lord. Then he comes down to the last piece of this. Keep moving forward. Remember the past, but come to the present and pray for revival. And then this beautiful couple of verses that's quoted so often. Then he says, Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. I think the key to this whole thing to keep moving forward and keep your joy and see movement, move of God happen in your community is you can't stop when the going gets rough. You can't stop. So I always thought this, this, this verse talked about we're going forth, you know, tears of joy we're shedding as we're spreading God's word to the communities. But as I studied the context, I think this is what's happening. First of all, when the children of Israel came back from Babylonian captivity, maybe they thought, hey, we're back in our land again. This is going to be awesome, man. But when they got back in the land, they found it was more difficult than they anticipated. There was a problem here. There were enemies. There were, they had to build again. When they eventually erected the old temple, the men who saw the former temple cried because they were so disappointed in it. There was a lot of problems. So when they came back, it wasn't an opportune season to sow. Some scholars believe that they were fighting a, a drought. This is written during drought or famine. And he says, they who sow in tears. So get the, get the word picture, get the metaphor. Here's a farmer going out with a leather bag on his on his shoulder, and it doesn't look good. Maybe it's drought. Maybe it's this arid Judean desert climate. But they're going out, and he is by faith sowing anyhow. Even when it doesn't look good, he's sowing. Even when he doubts the future, he's sowing. Even when times are difficult, he's sowing. Let me bring it to 2021. Even during COVID, you got to keep sowing. Even when you lose people, you got to keep going forward. Even when friends and family forsake you, you got to keep going forward. He said, sow. I believe for us it means sow the Word of God. You got to sow when it's favorable and sow when it's unfavorable. You got to sow in season and out of season. You got to preach the Word when people like it. 
And you got to preach the word when people don't like it. You got to stand for truth when when people are for you and stand for truth when people are against you. We have to be the church if the news media likes us or the news media doesn't like us. Hallelujah. We're going to believe for revival even though people may say it's not possible. I'm still going to stand and try to win every soul I can to Jesus before he comes back or before I go to meet him. Come on somebody. Can you shout hallelujah this morning? You sow in tears, and when do you do it? He says, continually. You go out continually bearing seed, sowing in the tough times. You have to keep moving forward. There's no going back. There's no going back. You're serving the Lord. There's no, there's no, there's no reverse in your car. There's only forward, guys. We got to go forward and got to keep on moving. Somebody shout amen. So um, I buried my wife a year ago in July. She died of ovarian cancer and it was a real shock to us. We had been married 28 years. We traveled together in ministry. She was a phenomenal musician, faith person, prophetic prayer warrior, uh, seen miracles, been healed herself miraculously, uh, on and on and on. And it was absolutely, she was amazing. And Todd and Tammy came to the funeral, and I'll never forget it. And because uh, I buried her in my hometown. But nonetheless, after she passed away, you know, our church had been praying, and uh, we had people all over the world. When she passed away, I had messages from Africa, messages from Japan, messages from other parts of Asia, missionaries we knew and people I'd encountered through the years. And, and here I'd pastored for 25 years and we'd preached revivals for uh, basically 30 years. And I prayed for thousands of people and seen people healed and baptized in the Holy Spirit and fall out under the power of God and glory cloud move in. And I've been so drunk in the Spirit I've had to get people to drive me home before. And then she passed away. And it shook my church, man. It shook us hard because especially the, young, especially the young women in our church, they were so attached to my wife. And so I thought, I don't know if you've ever lost anyone close to you like that, but man, what you go through in your mind is phenomenal. I fought, it seemed like every temptation and battle and suicidal thoughts to everything. And I fought the, the feeling to quit. Because I just thought, can I, pre- can I pastor anymore? Can I preach faith anymore? Can I preach healing anymore? And all I knew to do was we had a memorial service for her. And at that memorial service, I stepped up to the platform. And I said, guys, I'm too wrecked to say anything, really. But I will say this. I'm coming back. I'm going to take some time off, and I'm coming back to this church, and we're going to finish what we started. And, and the church erupted in praise like that, and I made a determination. The only, the, I have to go forward. It's all I know, even though the season isn't favorable. So I came back to the church, and I preached one Sunday, and the next Sunday I called an, I called an altar call for healing. Because I said, if, if I, the years I have left here, I'm going to make it very difficult for the devil. And so three ladies came forward with cancer. The second one, I went down to her and I said, what's your problem? She said, I've been diagnosed with ovarian cancer. And it hit me so strong. And I backed up. And I thought, what are you going to do now, Hans? What are you going to do now? Are you going to believe for this lady or are you just going to give up? I said, no, I'm going to believe for this lady. And we laid hands on her and God blessed this lady. I haven't seen her since, but if she wasn't healed, I'd be surprised. The power of God was so strong. And we took a stand and I just determined I'm not going back. I'm going forward. I buried four people from COVID in the past few months. We've lost people in our church. I don't know where some of the folks are. It's not, I had a major car accident after I lost my wife. I ended up with COVID in December of 2020. 
I'm like, I can't wait till this year is over. But you know what? We're still standing in 2021, and there's a promise, and I'm going to pray here, but there's a promise in this passage that says, if you do go forth and sow when it's not favorable, even crying, you will reap in joy. There's a promise that joy is coming to you. And then number two, it says, you will return rejoicing with the fruit of your labor, with sheaves in your hand. You will, that's a promise I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bless you with today. If you keep going through the difficult times, you're going to come out of it rejoicing with a new level of joy and anointing, and you're going to come back with fruit that you've gleaned through this harvest season. So now, since the month of March, something crazy happened for me. A TV opportunity opened up for me in Norfolk, Virginia. And now every Sunday morning, this Sunday morning at 8.30, I was preaching on television to a potential audience of, I don't know, three, four, five million people. I just went on Roku this morning, which has a potential audience of 65 million people. I went on Pakistani television a few months ago with 182 nations watching. Now I'm holding crusades from my office or from my platform on Zoom seeing more miracles and more people saved than I have seen probably in the combined 32 years of preaching the gospel. So I'm telling you, it paid not to give in and it pays not to quit. You never know when you're going to turn the corner and God's going to open up something for you like you've never experienced, you've never seen. Come on, I rebuke that spirit of discouragement off your lives this morning. I rebuke the quit out of you and I command you to go forth and do what God's calling you to do. Some of you he's calling to teach. Some he's calling you to be business people. Some maybe he's calling to preach. Maybe he has some future missionaries in here. I'm telling you what, whatever he's called you to do, do it even even if it seems unfavorable, even if it seems difficult, you do what God's calling you to do and God's going to bless you in the end. Come on, somebody put your hands together and give the Lord a praise in here this morning. Jesus didn't quit. Come on, Jesus didn't quit. He made it all the way, hallelujah, carrying the cross, crown of thorns, beaten to a pulp. With the, with the nail prints, he went all the way to the cross, gave his life for you and me, and then on the third day, God brought him out of the grave, conquering death, hell, and the grave forever, and now we're rejoicing because one man, the Son of God, didn't give up, and he didn't quit. Come on, punch your neighbor and say, you're not quitting. Come on, punch another neighbor and say, you're not quitting either. Hallelujah. Could we all stand in here this morning? Praise the Lord. Y'all may need to stay around for 11. We're getting, I feel like getting warmed up here. No, we might need the chairs. I have no idea. God is so good. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we give you praise. Come on, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just give you praise. Lord, I honor you right now for who you are. And God, I thank you for Life Changers Church. I thank you for Todd and Tammy Porter. God, I pray super encouragement in their lives. God, I thank you that they didn't quit. I thank you they've, they've not been part of the 1,784 that quit this month. But God, they're standing strong in faith and, and believing you for, the, uh, for a phenomenal future. And Lord, I just thank you right now. Every head bowed, every eye closed. How many of y'all would be honest? And lift your hand and say, Pastor, I've been discouraged, but the word really ministered to me this morning. I'm not going to embarrass you. Just let me see your hands. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just pray the spirit of discouragement. I bind it off of your life. And I pray that God looses his joy in you. And you have joy and happiness like you've never experienced before. I pray the next 90 days of this year is going to be the happiest time of your life. I just ask that boldly in faith in Jesus' name. With every head bowed, every eye closed, how many of you could lift your hand and say, Pastor, pray for me. I'm not serving the Lord. But this morning, I heard the word, and I felt something moving in my heart, and I want to dedicate my life to Jesus Christ. Maybe there's one person who would say, that's me. Thank you. Maybe there's another one who says, Pastor, I, I committed my life to Christ years ago, but, but I I've grown cold on that commitment, and I want to renew my, my commitment to the Lord this morning. 
If that's you, can I see your hand? I'm going to pray for you. Not embarrassing you, just going to pray for you right where you stand. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, everybody in this church praying with me this morning. Just pray this out loud, and let's pray it with these folks who raise their hands. And I'm telling you what, there's, there's rejoicing in the presence of the angels of heaven if one soul comes home. So we, we need to help somebody get across the finish line this morning. Amen? So come on, y'all pray out loud with me. Pray it boldly. Father in heaven, I come before you in Jesus' name. I repent of all my sin. Forgive me, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Be my Lord. Take the throne of my heart. Help me to serve you. Thank you for the forgiveness of sins. Thank you for being born again. And now, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you fill them with the Holy Spirit of God. I pray that you encourage these folks that are praying with us this morning. And, God, I just pray that you set a fire in them that the, that the devil nor the world can put out. And, God, you stir them up for your kingdom, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And I give you praise right now, Lord. And I give you thanks for what you're doing in this house. Hallelujah. God, I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you that discouragement goes out the front door right now. Hallelujah. Thank you for life changers. Hallelujah. God, I just thank you, Lord, for the next season they're going to walk into in the name of Jesus. And I pray it's a season of favor. I pray it's a season of great favor, Lord. And I just lay hands on my brother and sister now, and I just pray great favor in Jesus' name. Thank you for the visions, God, that haven't come to pass yet. And I pray, God, for the grace and for the provision to see everything in their heart accomplished, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And we give you praise for it right now. Come on, can everybody say amen? Come on, can we put our hands together this morning? Can you give the Lord a praise? Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Hey, we're going to take a second while the Lord's still moving in this place. If you need a healing this morning, if you need a healing touch this morning, we want you to make your way to the front. We want to pray for you today. Listen, God is still in the healing business. I don't care what, uh, what diagnosis you may have received. I don't care what you may be feeling right this moment. The devil is a liar. He's the father of all lies. Amen. And so don't let the enemy rob you of that healing today. Don't let the enemy steal that. This is your moment. The waters are troubled or I wouldn't be up here talking right now. But if you need prayer, make your way this way as we pray for Gary this morning. Amen. 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 Amen.